So, see, what, what I do know is going on is that um, people that want to work in healthcare, Chris Rock makes a joke about, you know, people say things just because it seems like the right thing to say. Um, one example he points to is like organ doning. Like, no one wants to be an organ donor, but you know, that's what they'll say, we just sign up to be an organ donor. What if they work out a way to to um, bring people back from the dead? Then you know, now you've now you've donated your eyes and you and your in, intestinal tract. Um, where I probably will always be at odds with. It's not an element of non-confrontation or deni bit, de denial, a denial phenomenon within me. I deliberately tend to refrain from watching mainstream media criminology videos, though the, the subject of crime and crime solving has fascinated me, been of great interest since uh, as long as I can remember, the kindergarten. Um, my nan, beautiful woman, what uh, she would... She had me subscribe to receive uh, Cluedo books distributed through the Arrow Book Club and she would, I'd sit at the feet of her rocking chair and she would read these mysteries. Uh, there are, there would tend to be around 12, 13 uh, Cluedo mini murder mysteries per novel and I was always fascinated that I was guessing right. You know, I'd, I'd be like, okay, well that's that has got to have been uh, Miss Scarlet with the candlestick in the in the library, and you know, and my nan would just uh, smile at me, going, "Very, very good, Luke." And I'm like, "Nan, you're joking. I want to see the page. Like, show me the pages." So she showed me the back page, and I'd I'd read the answer right, and, and um. You know what? What what pisses me off, and this is because there's you know, instead of this spooky, which is it's almost like a pin, a military pincer, on with, with one aspect is introspective where they want you thinking like a almost like a voodoo a voodoo a charmer, talking about transference, like um, if you were in Portugal. Uh, on a certain day, and your father was in uh, Lebanon, and um, your father punched a shopkeeper in in the in the cheek. Then, uh, you know, psychology is not opposed to saying things to make sure that you and all the population aren't to think that what what is meant by transference is not as spooky as that that from all the way across the world the father's punching of the shopkeeper now caused a sequence and a rig of genetic triggers within the mind of the son to go and 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 he's in portugal and he's punching it a shoplifter, I mean a, a shopkeeper, and um, I mean you you will see when you look at some of these criminology shows on the mainstream media or on Foxtel that you've clearly got during a sit down um, concentrated discussion of a perpetrator's motives after a three shoot a triple shooting spree of of three women. And he's already talking about how he, he'll go, I'm prepared to admit that I killed, but not that I murdered. And he saw this distinction because of his understanding of statements um, about ethical behavior that were not merely uh, commanded by the, the God of the Abrahamic faiths, um, 
but but you know mandated and demanded of by him but what they'll do they'll cock block uh further delving into religiously spawned crimes this is a hypocrisy because you know from the outset that you know how many religious people can you think of that you've met who have tried to recruit you into a church and you know if they made a success of you and you were teaching bible study to kids and you were drumming in the music ministry and and you were accepted as successful and you know they're there to take credit for any type of flourishing you achieve um, on the basis of the claim that their metaphysics is is a sufficient solution. They won't use the term final solution because that's too guilt by association to Adolf Hitler. But it's driving people into mon a monist... It's almost like in itself being uh, stamped with a psychological profile with limitations and uh, warfare, essentially, against against free thinking. Um, <clears throat> so you'll have these offenders, on, on, and then and then the media show, the the criminology show, will employ a psychologist to, or a psychiatrist, a, a criminologist, something to say. Say something like, as this man's even saying, you know, well, God commanded that, and blah, blah, blah. And God, this same God in the Bible, he did command all these things. So, you know, um, those of you in the religious right pushing this Bible, saying it's part of our proud Australian heritage, we should be thankful for it. What, what do you expect? You could have anything from... Um, uh, a celibate priest calling every ma male his brother and every female his sister and never so much as going on a romantic date for dinner with anyone his whole life. And you can have a pedophile thinking it's okay to fuck kids. Now where did it begin that there was a message uh, potentially in the Christian religion or the Abrahamic faiths scriptures that um, kids fu fucking kids or adults fucking kids and kids fucking adults uh, was made to seem Im implicit, not only implicitly permitted, but necessary and then covered and concealed with, with banal statements like, uh, here, here we are made in the image of God. Uh, and that's the book of Genesis, you know. The fact that they concentrated on and said the worst part of it was a, was a woman eating an apple. Uh, trust me, the, the, the movement for the empowerment of women, which um, I've seen to be essential my whole life, has not been made any easier by this story that, uh, oh, some dumb bitch ate a fucking apple off a tree. She's fucked us all. We're in a state of original sin. Oh, uh, what's your... Uh, we got to stop this inhumane uh, apple-eating... Uh, women-eating apples. It's, it's so inhumane. What's the solution? Uh, the solution is we meet every Sunday and we eat the body of this, this guy here. He's got long hair like the women. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, good solution. Good one, Christian logic. Good one, Christian logic. So what is happening and what I hate is because when there is a clearly religiously motivated crime, the offender is not brought to justice to testify to, to the, meta, the particular metaphysical content of how a passage in the Bible, one or more passages in the Bible inspired his crime, because the, the pathetic, it's obviously a religiously owned media network, um, trying to get their honours from the Queen or inhale her queefs or whatever it is, close as they can get to her. But then the fucking... Um, and because of it, they're doing a true injustice to society because they shift, essentially. They shift what the... They shift the motive off religion, even when it's been admitted to by the offender himself. And they'll try and point it at something else. Something like uh, your TV which is now the recent target. They want to go after your video next. You know? Um, uh, pause. Be right back.
Oh uh, yeah, so as I was saying, when guilt is clearly admitted and discussed by a, a perpetrator, an offender, to have been, in his view, uh, his best understanding of the obedience to the will uh, and, and moral, morally prescriptive dictates and, and behaviours laid down in the Bible by the biblical God. Uh, because what this does do collectively is points back at, well, why is a freedom, is the freedom to pursue this religion or religions like it stressed on, on our Human Rights Act? Uh, th these churches are against teaching you that you are a human and yet they want to demand it's a human right. Um, they're teaching you um uh, ideas from a time when the all the other rights every single other right mentioned on the rights act were there was uh more more initiatives of oppression pointed against those rights the other more essential rights the rights to life the right to health the right to movement and the right to expression and there were more there were more fascist encroachments against the all of those more rudimentary rights in the time of the of, of in biblical times uh and yet they want to throw in oh but it's your basic human right to have your freedom of religion well we know we could go there we know we have our freedom of to go to a stripper club or a brothel we know I have our freedom to go to a games arcade machine. We know I have our freedom to join AMF 10-pin bowling. Do you have to put all of that on, on, on the, right, the Human Rights Act? And at least our humanity is acknowledged by the, you know, by the library, by AMF, by the strippers, by the brothels. Uh, they're not telling you you're, you're an immortal soul in a bind because a woman ate an apple. Um, so the, a long-haired, a long-haired man that loved everyone had to be um, killed, suicided up a hill, carrying his own cross, and killed. Now, do you think these inbreeders are going to know the difference between a willful human sacrifice to a god and a suicided man? You got uh, the prospect that he had a feminine traits because, you know, there's talk of him having women followers, but it more might have been more of just. A sense of or vibe of a woman hangout because he is like I'm not suggesting to you he was rooting all these women fucking them all. I'm talking about just hanging out with um, hanging out with women because he himself had a feminine qualities. So a certain amount of attrition from a bunch of ang aggressive males armed with weaponry, and they and and they could suicide suicide him. Uh, they would be you know that feminine. Death to the ladies first, and the gentleman who listens to Armour Goddamn Motherfucking Geddon by Marilyn Manson. Uh, this man's always ten step ahead of the inevitable destruction of Christianity, and it's. I uh, lo love that guy. But, um. <clears throat> you know. Uh, it's 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 there's almost the implicit concealment of Jesus having fem effeminate traits himself. Um, he chooses to grow his hair long. Uh, there's no testimony, though we, it, it's mentioned that King Herod wants him dead. There is no mention of um, the testimony of the Queen to King Herod. It's completely omitted. Uh, for in, in all four gospels, there is nothing, nothing, not a peak, not a peak, out of the wishes of the queen to King Herod. I think she looked at him like the way that the uh, initiator in a Jerry Springer fight looks at a woman that she hates. When, you know, um, destroy and destroy. Him. And why is this? If he was a first century persecuted bisexual. And you have in within uh, royal and noble bloodlines uh, males getting raised and trained. Well, you are to be the future king. A king must know these things. And there's this rote learnt uh, dictate. Uh, here's your training and your formal inst 
and then the women is getting taught uh, are getting taught you know you ought to be the queen you ought to be prim and proper you ought to satisfy your man's sexual needs at every time and to be clean at all times and blah, blah blah and each of them are really getting propped up and raised with various rules and then a bisexual is walking around making friends with everybody and just having a general uh, knack and click with the people that he crosses paths with uh, and is like a, an, an almost natural universalist. Now, if you'd studied uh, essentially um, how to occupy a political position in, in a, uh, a, a monist, monarchist structure, then it might look like, as you would observe this man uh, out in society, that your thunder was being stolen somewhat because he'd be doing... You'd obviously know, oh, Carpenter's son. Okay. Uh, what did he learn about um, ancient monarchist secrets of upbringing as a Carpenter's son? Well, he can't have learned anything. And yet the, uh, and the bonds he would have been making and the friendships he would have been making everywhere he travelled and the minds that he would have been spurring on to think and to question more and, to, and, and immersing them in wonderment, um, helping the sick and the poor and, and the underdog. Um, and essentially, per contrast, the king and queen are, are prompted up with a, a political like education that's all about their rule and the securing and maintaining and practicing of their rule and then Jesus is not really wanting any acknowledgement for the efforts he's making uh, you know you can compare yourself in your society and community to the sym the symmetric uh, the symmetrical arrangement, the ge and geometrical equality between like um, little little um, oh, they're called within within flower petals, you know, uh, arranged so delicately, and 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 a human mind interacting with other human minds, um, you can clash perspectives of all kinds. This is why I hate these mindset dogs that, that they're out to try and catch you for your mindset. So I, I'm, um, I haven't had the money to travel, so I'm a philosopher. I read, I read a lot of philosophy because uh, it's it fired my mind's interest in education, which was for a certain time throughout high school a real struggle for me to personally even have an interest in myself. And I'm, you can ask my peers from those years, then they'll tell you I was constantly turning to them for a uh, request for help with this or that assignment. Um, before I began to truly learn and love learning and have this ex explosive thirst for knowledge was after spending a lot of time thinking about the progressive achievements of two bands, um, Corner and Marilyn Manson. Uh, this is... Re 2002-2003 and in knowing and learning that David Bowie was a fundamental inspiration to Marilyn Manson I had thought back to how he was, he was a captivating this captivating mysterious mind in his role as the labyrinth you know he's um yeah just uh, I really love the, the movie Labyrinth and tracking down and well, getting a copy of the DVD of the best of Bowie, two disc set of the clips for his, his best singles. Uh, I was just blown away by what, and, and, then, and then you start reading Nietzsche and you start reading the existentialists. The existentialists tend to be mocked by religionists who, whose ideas at least, or whose, whose teachings or philosophies predate the Age of Enlightenment, Reformation, Renaissance, and, and things like that. Um, they seem to think that they win if they hold to the same metaphysics, no matter how much uh, the world changes. 
or has the potential to change. So in closing on that matter, something else, if, 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 there are, if, if the media company is religiously owned and, the, and even the criminology shows, even with a criminal admitting that he shot three women because he thought of, he was thinking of his duty to the biblical God, and this is a, this is a book saying if a woman is uh, found not to be a virgin, she is to be stoned at her father's doorstep. I mean, these verses aren't being spoken against, out against. Um, they're saying this is the same God. It says He says in Leviticus himself, I am the Lord, I shall not change. You've got the revamped Jesus of what I'm sure are the um, way, way later plantation of words in his mouth saying, Every jot and tittle of the law must be upheld. I think what was attracting him, people to him, in addition to his loving nature, was also the fact that he was inspired to create it, um, to say we could find a better way than, um, than what had become the, the rules and regulations imposed upon the status quo, which I'm convinced he... he He's sort of be oppressive. Um, yeah, so what I've also realized is that uh, these two men I used to work for who were social science, fancied themselves to have the prowess of uh, precise social scientific researchers. Uh, they, they think of themselves as martyrs, and working for the, with them in the chemist, you know, Gary would uh, stop and pause and almost look at every third or fourth script, and occasionally you'd hear him talk and wonder, like, could this be a forged script? Could this be a forged script? And you later learn he's into this process called martyring, but you wonder, by, by what qualifications have you been given the right to... Um, a, identify a martyr, B, ident uh, even ascertain by uh, interviewing a martyr that the martyr is sure of your definition of what a martyr is, what you mean by the word martyr. Um, I'm not a person who I prefer. I much prefer people thinking about their own rights. If there's a message, I'd get a... I, it's not even my message. It's just basic rights written in a rights act. Now, being an observer of that, and, and what keeps constantly happening, though, is that what people feel like is their duty to get involved in one religion or another. I don't see to be... Uh, it doesn't even say, like, you know, you have freedom of religion, but you have the, also the freedom to abstain from um, any any religion because of it uh, atheism keeps getting represented as a philosophy when it's not atheism you're all all of you are already atheists if you believe in one god then every other god ever mentioned or written about in the history of mythology and what religion everywhere you're an atheist in relation to every single one of those other gods um so we just go one God further because there's something about consistency that's um, consistent. But atheism is not a philosophy. It's, it's the absence of theism. Uh, Anti-theism, so, so, some atheists will want to study further because they may grow sensitive to detecting the ways in which the religious rights... Um, proactive pushiness is infringing upon uh, and compromising and usurping the rights of others in the citizenry. Now, the bisexual rights movement is, uh, I think, at the base of in the instinct of the religious right uh, and its proactivists. It feels like it'll feel to them like they're fulfilling uh, a, the religious martyring process. If they detect a citizen and the, the physical appearance of the citizen, you know, they've got their nose, if they can pattern match in their memory an approximate 
pattern match of the facial features, the uh, appearance, to their images of, of, of Jesus, who Freemasonry's approach is, is, is to say that Jesus was a martyr, that he wasn't sent by God as, uh, per se. I would agree with them that the mockery of the Gospel of John is um, important. It's not to be taken seriously at all. It's one that almost makes Jesus out to be Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. It's it's what led to like people like Michael Shermer saying, uh, God sacrifices himself to himself to save us from himself. And an incoherent rubbish that you just cannot understand. Now, um, so yeah, the and because they because because a lot of these people are inclined into thinking that this Jesus, their Jesus Christ laid down his life of his own will, carrying his own cross up a hill, and they don't get fuck you. Do you understand that a certain amount of a certain amount of um, unending pressure imposed upon anyone's mind can push them to the point of feeling like it's best they end their own life that that does happen that's why it's why in the beginnings of school peer pressure is taken uh and brought to our attention because and and, and peer pressure and learning to be an opposite uh, to an opponent to peer pressure um everyone at different rates i think catches up with this idea if 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 for no other reason than that there are, there's obviously better things to do with our time, but um, that could be what just happened in, to, to Jesus as he carried his cross up a hill. And and again, these Garden of Eden inbreeders, you know, less concerned with fucking their their auntie, their their sister, their cousin, uh, their mother. Um, than they are with a woman eating a, a goddamn apple. And you know, uh, do you trust the, those those sorts of thinkers to tell the fuck tell you the fucking difference between a suicided man carrying his cross up a hill and um, God's uh, God's triumphal triumphant conquering over uh, over death. Um, and um, an achievement and a feat, uh, a feat on Jesus, Jesus' behalf. Something he had planned for, something he had he had wanted to give you for Christmas, something he had uh, thought would be in your best interest. Uh, just try and imagine Charles Manson uh, or someone, some some criminal uh, awaiting execution in the electric chair, just thinking of all of you or the whole world going well. As I as I die, I'm um, I'm I'm gonna telepathically curse all of your lives or some shit. I mean that's the opposite because I don't I don't consider Jesus of, of Nazareth to have, to have been someone who warranted being put to death. Um, who deserved it? So I'm I've, obviously I'm in protest of of the crucifixion, uh, and I'm also in um, I also detest the ap horrific errors in judgment that it's leading old dick dipshits like Gary Kans and Roger told them make because you know that you could take a man a woman if you can match their figure if you if, to, to the mold in, in some sort some any way shape or form of, of uh, the, the facial features of, of, of Jesus their martyr they'll, they'll think no there's some issue here I think of uh, uh, you know ta taking on the, this martyr will take on the sins of the world. Let's invent a sin. Let's invent a world of sin. Let's invent a whole bunch of. And meanwhile, all you've done is been a rights observer, been admired for being a rights observer, and defended your friends. Um, but there's no other way for these pricks who who are scientists, and the fact that they are scientists in a sense as pharmacists. But also dabbling in this social scientific research domain, while being Freemason religionists, by all rights, their their, their knowledge of scientific method should have meant that they'd gut the core tenets of their own faith before thinking that they don't have the right to study a single one of us. Now, are they doing that? No. 
So that leaves them with the uh, shallow. It doesn't waves, uh, it just leaves basics. Yeah, yeah so the, uh, the Jesus mesh. Funny interview by uh, uh, yeah. uh, um, Bill Maher. They've got no other, they've got, they're, they're holding on to principles like seeing is believing, hearing is believing. Let's find martyrs, let's find martyrs. Let's martyr him in an issue about her. Look, notice how both their facial features kind of pattern match to the Jesus images. Yeah, well, what's the drama? Let's invent the drama. Sins of the world. He paid for the sins of the world. Let's invent a drama. It's going to sell. It's going to sell for sure. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fucking sell. Um, no, it, it is not going to sell. And you, the two of you have pushed me too far. And I have integrity even as far as other people in your business are concerned because they know from their dealings with me that I uh, you know and at that time in my romantic life I enjoyed women who I obviously don't I, I don't take pleasure in anyone's misery but I kept realizing it was no coincidence that I was meeting women who had who had endured and survived mistreatment by people and they the truth be told is that you sit down and be empathetic and listen and there are there's shifts from states of being really pissed to really sad but when fuming the experience of um she's taking her anger out on you you know to the extent that the you know the police state would call would arrest her but you know you don't want the fucking police state around either mysteriously it's like uh it's alleviating of every 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 do every guy that ever verbally picked on you or physically picked on you. Uh, she punched me like a dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. No, I'm disgusted by. Um, I am disgusted by this. This view that you know to be a pra to be an Australian means you must you must be in love with the monarchy, which or uh, and uh, which must mean you know you you accept these faith based beliefs. Uh, they not only make you dumber, you know. Um, for instance, in in Christ mythology, you've got. This uh, mysterious Jesus' closest female relationship seems to be a woman, Mary Magdalene, a prostitute. Now, this can mean that committed Christian girls may be compelled and taught by their churches to think that the best way to please God and serve their Lord is to emulate the psychology of, of whore. Uh, now, I'm not against any women's rights to choose what they wish to do if a woman chooses to be a sex worker that's her right obviously defend that but what I uh, think w deserves to be argued against is uh, you're saying you're spiritualist and um, that you know eternal torture is the alternative unless you make these choices to to behave in whichever way that pleases Lord Jesus um, well, that's not right. I mean, society is giving better liberties to women who would want to choose. Do you, you can choose yes or no to work in the sex industry, not, um, you know, Jesus is your Lord. Jesus' closest relationship, women-wise, was with Mary Magdalene, a prostitute. You'll get closer to Lord Jesus if the more you whore yourself. So start whoring yourself. Um, that can happen, and, um, and, and then if it's follow G Lord Jesus or be tortured in hell forever, then it's almost like the church threatening a woman to be whorish and to get involved in the sex industry. That is, that is vastly more cruel and inhumane than what secular society is doing in relation of, of respecting an individual human's right to the liberty and freedom of choice. 
Uh, and that's why I will, would oppose and contest the church on that one too. So I don't follow any Lord Jesus. Uh, I am in protest of his crucifixion. And it's something, yeah. Um, I think he was a man ahead of his time. Because you've just got... Um, literary article evidence A, B, C, D, and E of of monarchist loving or intimidate slash loving slash fearing slash intimidated by scribes decorating the post mortem Jesus in poly uh, polytheistic paganism stories. Um, you know, it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's like a more barbaric version of, fuck Buckingham, why didn't you raise the flag for Diana? Uh, wash your mouth out with dope. This is atrocious. Raise the flag for Diana, you fucking moron. Yeah, anyway. So yeah, by by phobia, if Jesus loved everyone, well then you go ask the question. But you know, they say, well, he's a man. He was a man. So okay, there's a natural concept there we can understand. It's not a supernatural concept. It's it's not um. He was a walking tomato who could talk and walk on water and turn water into wine. But if they say he was a man who could walk on water and turn water into wine, there's a greater likelihood that the masses will believe that story than that he was a talking tomato that could um, that could walk on water and turn water into wine. Uh, so what's unexplored is his humanity and Jesus. And Bishop Spong is right, I think, on the point of saying that it was. The humanity of of Christ that led to and sparked all conversations about his divinity. Uh, so those that's all hearsay. So that it was truly um, a resonance effect of people not understanding his humanity precisely enough. Well, I'm I'm suggesting consider the prospect that this is a, pers a persecuted, mistreated, and wrongfully executed. Uh, first century bisexual. Look up the health statistics in in, in this city, uh, and how they're pointing at the bisexual community, saying, "Ah, oh, more prone to nervous breakdowns, more prone to depression." Um, and then look at their religious employer, who's um, training them, and be, just because they have this sense about them that they can't quite describe in the back of their mind. Uh, they feel attracted to teaching them a philo their philo what their philosophy is to be, and they feel like teaching them f their their philosophy for life more than the academic topics that pertain to their professional role and job description. And it's because it's it's just because of this funky, unwanted. We do, we do not want it. Like if you're a scientist that thinks that you're engaged in relationships with supernatural minds in a supernatural dimension. Like as soon as you've measured any any space, it's part of nature. It's not it's not beyond nature. Your beyond nature could be your biphobia and the oppression and mistreatment in principle towards those who are in the bisexual community. And it's a concept I didn't want to. I'd hoped it was not going to pan out to be uh, an accurate. Um, reflection of society in the mirror but seems to be the case um, no one has disproved that morbid conclusion yet um the critical thinking concerning how the book of Genesis arrived, you know, you can hear people say that 
these sorts of stories with one man and woman uh, as the first two humans beginning the race crops up in a number of different cultures and my question in return was well given what historians will represent to no have known about that those points in time in those locations were the masses and the major populations subject to the rule of a single monarch kingdom because if the answer to that is yes see you need to think that back then these kingdoms were not just the ruling leaders, they were um, a superior, uh, the gods had, you know, made their blood more special, um, and their bloodlines more special and, and chosen, and they were to rule over everyone. They were the library, they were the media r reports, they were the judge, jury, and executioner. They were everything. Uh, and then they were so uh, insistent on not... That, that that no say son born into royal uh, blood royal blood uh, should ever fuck or conceive a child with a, a commoner or a pleb. Now if you're a isolated kingdom, um, you know led by uh, <laughs> royal members with of royalty with with chosen blood blessed by the gods then to abstain from sexual intercourse with any of the the plebs or the common people uh, actually did mean that inbreeding was their only way to keep their bloodlines pure so you know you see this um, portrayed in shows like Game of Thrones it's like don't have a baby with a fucking commoner they're, they're beneath us they're scum so they're left fucking their own siblings and impregnating their own siblings. Now, uh, and th while thinking that the gods have still chosen them to and given them their s powers of sovereignty. So you obviously see these elements uh, represented right away in, in tales like the book of Genesis in the Bible. Um, see, I don't think it was the nerdy, shy nerdy dude in the bunch who managed to write this story of Genesis and spread it around uh, in, in so many volumes, in so many cultures, that um, it's so well preserved throughout the ages right to this day. I think it's a remnant of, of um, you know, the ancient monarch kingdom times, <laughs> like the Canberra times. Uh, here, are your, here are your origins, and, and it's a transposition of what the the behaviors that the uh members of the of the royal of royalty were in, were up to themselves fucking their first the first and second third fourth female cousins rather than to um weaken or or, or contaminate the purity of their god appointed bloodlines should they fuck a peasant or a commoner so <clears throat> Uh, you have that, and you, it's clear that the author of, of, Gen, of the book of Genesis saw inbreeding as so um, taken for granted, I would, I would say is accurate, because, you know, the hideous crime is that the woman, first woman eats an apple. And they even are concealing, conversely, that um, they didn't want for women to have knowledge because they called it the tree of knowledge. So, you know, uh, all this inbreeding is, is not mentioned, and uh, not mentioned to be uh, wrong of any kind, but a woman incre increasing her fructose in intake, for eating fruit, and be it an apple or a pomegranate, uh, is considered a hideous sin that, that, that fucks all of mankind over the ages. Uh, what do we, and, and they go, well, that's such a, pro that's such a horrible problem that um this woman should eat an apple she's fucking fucked us all up stupid bitch and um, and then they go well so what's our solution to this problem and then they go oh let's meet every sunday and eat the body of this uh, eat, eat this guy's whole body uh instead you know because eating an apple is so a woman eating an apple is so cruel and inhumane 
Uh, we should eat this long-haired man's whole body at, ch at church every Sunday. And, and, that's, and that's, that's Christian logic for you. Um, it's, it's, it spawns out of implicit inbreeding. So you know, everyone in society, I think, and in Australia, has this, ex uh, this that we're wired, in a sense, to watch out for the clergy and the pious and uh, representatives of the Catholic Church because we're wondering how many of them are truly pedophiles. Now, where did that sense of wonderment that they might be pedophiles come from? Well, I put it to you that it, maybe it did come from that same Adam and Eve story too, because there is no way that Adam and Eve had uh, started off the species unless, uh, uh, particularly beginning with having two male sons, Cain and Abel, and Cain murders Abel, that left three humans on the planet, Adam, Eve, and Cain, which meant that Cain, and I wonder if this is where the saying like father like son sickenly arose because, you know, that would have meant both the son, um, Cain, and uh, the father, Adam, had both fucked to impregnation and delivery of child and children, um, the uterus of Eve. Now, then it meant for that first wave of, of sons and daughters that they all, all had to fuck each other. Uh, conceive babies with each other and or else or else the Genesis story is a lie and does not account for our origins uh, I think I'm a person who even if God's arm was like visible in the sky by day and night and he was sticking his middle finger at me I'd still be the I'd still be the person screaming for to meet Richard Dawkins and be like can you take me to the nearest pond that you think resembled the um, the cosmic soup that we we emerged and evolved out of? Uh, I'll admit that about myself. Even if even if God was able to be photographed and and, and interviewed, uh, I'd still want to debate him and say, no way, no no way did you start off. Uh, the home, the race, the human race, um, from incessant inbreeding and pedophilic. So, so you know, there's your there's your inspiration, really, probably for why pedophiles arise. In the, a lot of people say it's because the celibacy oaths just over time drive them nutty. But it's I think it's the Genesis story too, and the the fact that they they are shift original sin they take original sin and call it the consummation of apples um maybe in addition to my philosophy book i should try and uh you know have a meeting to discuss um with with uh like fruit markets uh woolworths coles fish fresh food markets um <laughs> I think I might know a way to increase your distribution of apples. Well, and I love that about the Aboriginal Dreamtime philosophy too. It's the Rainbow Serpent. Um, first, the Rainbow Serpent is, is, smiles when you eat apples. And yes, the Rainbow Serpent invites you not to have intercourse with your own, own blood relatives. Um... Uh, so, you know, who believed the Christian bullshit and then got aggressive and perhaps uh, enslaved Aborigines here or mis and, and, and mistreated Aborigines here. And the Aborigines turn out to be more in sync with what evolutionists now know about how our DNA, it's, uh, it, it's even shared with the trees around us. And the Aborigines saw that while well, European Christians just saw incest and biphobia and violence 